We're making these today. I'm gonna put them in your mouth, and you're gonna eat them. They're delicious. All right, first things first, we're gonna peel some potatoes and get those boiling at a nice slow temperature. We just wanna cook them until they're tender and then we're gonna crumble them up and uh, put them in a pot with water. And I have a little bit of mixed peppercorn in there, chili flake, and I'm gonna add a little bit of salt as well. And I got a mix of uh, red and yellow potatoes, not for any particular reason. Now this is definitely a step that you can do ahead of time. Um, just cooking the potatoes until they're all the way cooked through and then crumbling them and uh, making your filling. All that can be done ahead of time. Here are our potatoes. And what I'm noticing is this guy is quite a bit bigger than the other one. So I'm just gonna cut this guy in half so that they cook a little bit more evenly. And there, now we have similar shapes there. Like I said, I have chili flake in there, a little bit of mixed peppercorn. I'm gonna pour a little bit of salt in there as well. And we're just gonna do this low and slow. Uh, what we're looking for is when we stick it with a uh, toothpick or some kind of skewer or something like that, it goes in with minimal resistance and then when you pull it out, the weight of the potato just pulls that right off nice and easy. So we'll take a look at that when that is uh, done cooking. But I'm gonna put this on the stove and get it started. Bring it up to a boil, reduce to a simmer, and then nice and slow. We're gonna get our sauce ingredients together here. So what I've already um, gotten together is uh, two and a half teaspoons of lime juice, two teaspoons of soy sauce, two teaspoons of honey, two teaspoons of fish sauce, and I'm gonna get one teaspoon of grated uh, ginger. So um, using a spoon to peel this skin away, we're gonna get down to the ginger here and then grate it and then we'll start heating up our sauce. Now, samosas are traditionally served with like a chutney or something like that, but I really like this uh, coconut curry sauce I found. So I'm gonna get this going and I made a couple changes, add a little bit of brown sugar and stuff to kind of sweeten it up. Okay, there's a teaspoon of grated ginger. So here's my pan that I'm gonna use. I have some coconut milk poured out of the can here. We're going to get six tablespoons of coconut milk. And you always want to whisk that stuff together just because the fat and the liquid can separate. Also going to get a tablespoon of curry paste. Uh, my ploy here. Great brand. I mean, this stuff keeps in your fridge for super long and it just got so much flavor in it. Got a tablespoon here. Put that in there. And then all I'm going to do is bloom this curry paste in this coconut milk for about 30 seconds or so until it's well incorporated. The sauce starts to thicken up. And then I'm going to add all of my other liquid ingredients here. Uh, my ginger, soy sauce, lime, honey, and fish sauce there. Uh, I'm gonna taste it and then maybe add a little brown sugar if I need to. So now that I can start to see that steam rising, the consistency is right. I can just turn that off and mix in my liquid. Okay, I have my sauce removed from the heat now. We're going to just check it for seasoning. There's a little bite in the back of the throat from the acidity. So that's why I like to adjust with a little bit of brown sugar. So I'm just pinching a little bit of brown sugar in here. We're gonna taste it as we go. I'm gonna just do it just a little bit more. And if this is done, then I can cool it down. 
And you can decide how to serve it with your samosas. If you want to serve it cold straight from the fridge, that's fine. Uh, I'm just going to pull mine out, uh, you know, a little bit earlier so it's kind of like room temp. I just don't like the, the drastic um, contrast between having something that's really hot like those fried samosas with a really cold sauce. Like, I like it to just be a little bit more compatible. potatoes are done. I'm just going to show you what I've been doing to test them. I have a large skewer here. And so basically what I'm doing is I'm pushing in just with the slightest bit of pressure. The stick is going through with relatively no pressure whatsoever. And as I pick it up out of the water, the weight of the potato just lets it slide right off. That's how I know it's ready. Okay. So I'm going to put these in a little container here and cool those off so I can work with them. And they're gonna get cooked one more time when I make the filling for the samosas. But I wanna cool them off a little bit so it's easier to work with. And then I'll crumble them and cook them with the peppers and other things that I have ready for that. Um, did take quite a bit of time, probably an hour total cook time. Um, just like to do it nice and slow. And uh, I would definitely do this ahead of time just to save yourself a little pressure. I have a couple things going right now. I have my potatoes cooled down, ready to go. I have my sauce cooled down, and now it's tempering for service. I have fresh thyme here that I'm going to dry using a microwave, which is a nice little trick. Uh, if you have dry thyme, then this is your time to use it. We're gonna go about a minute at a time. All right, 60 seconds on the clock. So we have our flour here ready to mix. We're going to put in some oil here. We're gonna put in one tablespoon of oil. This is just vegetable oil. I got a little sunflower oil here that I'm gonna use for this. Uh, I also have two cups of water that are ready to go here. Now this is kind of an interesting recipe in the sense that we are going to start with half a cup of water and then add a tablespoon at a time until we get the consistency of our dough just right. Then we're gonna let it rest, make our stuffing, and we'll bring it all together and fry it. The thyme needs to be added before we add the water, so we're waiting on that. And in the meantime, I'm gonna crumble some potatoes here. I'm gonna go check on that time. Time is just starting to warm up, still very soft. What we're looking for is uh, a brittle type texture. So we're trying to bring all the moisture out of it. Uh, I put it in there for another 90 seconds right now. So in the meantime, like I said, we're gonna crumble some potatoes. So just with your bare hands here, we don't want to uh, totally make a smooth kind of mashed potato consistency. We want it to have a little bit of lumps, a little bit of texture. All right, two and a half minutes on a high power microwave here. A teaspoon of dried thyme, adding that to my flour. Pork for the mashed potatoes, but I'm gonna finish off my dough first. Got my thyme and my oil in there. I'm just gonna give that a quick mix. We're gonna start with half a cup first of water. Stir that together. And my two cups of all purpose flour is almost completely hydrated from just that bit. So we're looking for a firm dough. I can already tell that it's kind of reaching its maximum hydration right now with the amount of liquid that's in there. So I'm going to add a tablespoon of water. And at this point we're just going to add a tablespoon at a time until it gets to where we want it to be. All right, we're getting to the point where we can take it out of the bowl. Just wipe off the rest of that. I'm gonna save that bowl off to the side for now. Probably gonna let my dough rest in that while I make my stuffing. So I'm folding and kneading. Looking for this dough to come together in just one cohesive little bunch. So right now it's really grainy. There's parts of it that are dry. There's parts of it that are wet. Trying to bring it all together. So I'm bringing the sides together underneath and I'm pressing down. Okay, I'm going to wrap that in some plastic wrap.
so that it gets the maximum hydration that it needs. Put that in that bowl, and I'm just gonna set that aside for a little bit. Okay, I have all my elements ready to go here. I have cumin here, I have ginger, frozen peas, crumbled potatoes, cilantro, peppers, and then I have a mixture of lemon juice, uh, coriander seed, and turmeric here. So we're gonna put this all in the pan at different stages and bring it all together to make one delicious stuffing with some salt. Got about medium low heat right now, just warming it up nice and slow. Waiting for it to get warm enough so that I can drop that oil in. And then waiting for that oil to heat up to a nice shimmer and then I'm gonna drop my cumin seeds in. All right, we got those cumin seeds toasting up. The smell is already starting to permeate the kitchen here. Just swirl that oil around, get all of that flavor into all that oil. Now let's add our ginger. Ginger's got a little bit more moisture in it, so it's gonna sizzle a little louder there. As long as we're stirring, we're not gonna burn. Be scared to get your hands in there. Cilantro and chilies. It's looking great, it smells good. Let's get those potatoes in there. Half a cup of frozen peas. I need some salt. I haven't done any of that yet. Start with a couple pinches. Potatoes can take quite a bit of salt. Let's try that. Maybe a little less than a tablespoon of salt so far added. God, that lemon juice and turmeric is just awesome in that. Okay, that's it. That filling is done. I have my dough I'm ready to use. We're gonna divide this up into seven pieces. So I've been taking my uh, each of these balls and cutting them in half again to make a little bit smaller of a samosa. So you get a little bit more bang for your buck when you make this recipe. You'll make 14 of them and they're gonna be a really good size. So what we're doing here is I have a little bit of bowl of, uh, I have a little bowl of water here off to the side. I'm just dip dipping my fingers in there, running it across the flat cut side and we're bringing those two sides together to make the first seam. Okay, once you overlap them, press them together and then pinch them as well. Nice deep cone there to work with. Take some filling here. And these potatoes, I mean, there's, there's a lot of air in this filling, so don't be afraid to put some scoops in and push down with your finger to get all the way down into the bottom of that cone. We have a lot of filling here, so we can use it up, stuff them full. There you go. And you want about enough in there to almost like form a bulge there at the top. And you're going to take the other end, okay, that's your rolled out end right there, and bring it all the way up to the tip of that seam, okay, and then bring both those edges together. Now you can take a little water and just run it along the seams there. That'll help it stick together. But I've found that there's a little bit of moisture in the filling. As you bring this stuff together, it tends to eke a little bit out. And I haven't had any blow up on me. So I think this is plenty. If you really wanna be cautious, you can fold this over like that. And now we have like kind of like a doubled up seam there. My oil is just above 300 degrees, probably around 315 or so. I know it's going to drop down as soon as I drop these in there, but I'm ready to fry. So, 
dropping those down, flat side down. And if you have a deep enough pot, you don't have to do what I'm doing, which is rolling these over to make sure that they're getting fried on all sides. If you have a deep enough pot and enough oil, you can totally submerge these. Okay, that color is starting to wrap around the edges here. I'm ready to flip. I'm rolling these guys over. Just a little bit of dark color there right in the center where it was resting on the bottom of the skillet. Totally fine. This big guy might need two rolls. We'll see. See what happens. If you're using a shallow pan like I am, you really have to be careful about displacement. Uh, you don't want that oil to be so close to the rim that when you drop all those samosas in, the oil comes over the top. Uh, especially if you're using a gas stove, that can be a recipe for disaster. So don't do that. Here's my pile of samosas. So you can make. 28 of this size, or you can make 14. This just came out of the pan, so it's really hot. Of this size, which is really big. Sucker's fat. There they are. Got my dipping sauce ready to go. And uh, yeah, hope you liked it. I hope you liked the video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe and check out my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Nick Becomes a Chef.